Abraham, the man the Bible calls the father of many nations. But how did it happen? How did he get there? Welcome to the Gospel Message Radio Program. My name is Wes Hepner. The last few weeks we've been looking at the story of Abraham. We see how God makes this covenant and Abraham believes. But Abraham then makes this mistake of having a child with his servant girl, Hagar. But the next two chapters, God confirms his covenant that Sarah will have a child. Interesting, in Genesis 17, Abraham laughs. And in Genesis 18, Sarah laughs. And yet... God's promise is true. And if you remember from last week, God asks Abraham this incredibly important question, is anything too hard for God? And it's a good reminder for us when facing impossible situations in life, when you think God's promises aren't for you because of circumstances, remember, nothing is too hard for God. Today, one of the most amazing conversations we find in the Bible that God has with anyone God tells Abraham his plan, and Abraham thinks he's negotiating with God. Before we go into that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity on this radio program to share your word. I thank you for each person that's listening. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would draw them to you. I pray for those struggling in life, maybe going through really hard times, maybe that are sick, Lord, that you will show them that you care for them and that you are right there beside them. I pray that this program would be an honor and glory to you and that your spirit would lead each word that is spoken. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Genesis chapter 18 verses 16 to 33, Abraham negotiates with God over Sodom. Let's read. The men rose up and looked toward Sodom and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom is great, because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abram stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? Preadventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Preadventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Will you destroy the city for the lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty-five, I will not destroy it. And he spake again to him and said, Preadventure there be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Preadventure there shall be thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Preadventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, O let not the Lord be angry. I will speak but this once, if there be ten found there. And God said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. So in this text, we see a change happening. These men are leaving, these three men that are in the form of God. These three bodies walk away, but we read the conversation that God is having with himself. God asks himself, should I tell Abraham what I'm about to do? Is it good for Abraham to know? I wonder how often in our life we don't know what's about to happen and we're asking God to tell us. We're asking And we're praying for an answer. And God is asking himself, would it be good for this person to know? And sometimes the answer is no. 
Sometimes the answer is yes. Now, please understand, God is not asking himself because he doesn't know what to do or because he doesn't know the answer to the question. He knows what to do. He knows what is best. But I believe the Bible writes this so we understand the heart of God and why sometimes he doesn't show us his plan at a certain time. Maybe because we're not ready for it. And although we maybe never admit it, God is right by not telling or showing us. But here in this story, God actually tells Abraham what he's about to do. He's going to go to Sodom and Gomorrah and see their sin. And God tells Abraham of the judgment that is coming, that he's going to go see their wickedness. Now we see this over and over in the Old Testament, that the sin of the people becomes so great. God's wrath is kindled and there is judgment for the people. It happens with the children of Israel and they have to live as slaves for years. It happens with certain kings, certain leaders that are punished. We see God's great mercy has an end and then comes punishment. Interesting, we live in a world today where people talk endlessly about God's love, his mercy and grace, which is right and good but almost never about his hatred for sin and his coming judgment on it. If you read Revelations, you see almost a whole book showing the wrath of God at the end of the age, at the end of the time of grace, punishing sin and destroying the wicked. See, God does not change. We do live in a time of grace now, but this time will come to an end one day when God raptures his church to be with him. And then there will be punishment for sin. My friend, if you're living in sin and maybe you don't care, you don't have any conscience toward it, you maybe think it doesn't matter, I want to remind you in love that the judgment of God is coming. I would urge you to repent of your sin, to turn your life around. The good news is you still live in this time of grace. The good news is God promises to forgive when we repent of our sins. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God tells Abraham of his judgment, and then Abraham begins this conversation with God. It's kind of like a negotiation, but really it's a prayer. Now, sometimes we say things like, God's word is truth. Don't try to change it. God is God and you're not. And that's right. Sometimes we say things like, you need to change your life to the Bible, not change the Bible to fit your life. And that is also a true statement. You are not going to change what God is going to do because you don't know better than God and you don't know everything that God knows. And yet here we find Abraham talking with God, negotiating things through with God. Now remember, nowhere in the Bible does God tell Abraham that he will destroy the righteous with the wicked. Nowhere does God even say he'll destroy the wicked. He just says he's coming to see the wickedness. We see that in verse 20 and 21. But Abraham knows the heart of God. He knows that God punishes sin and he has a fear for the righteous and for the wicked living in that city. He has a fear for his nephew Lot and his family. So why can Abraham negotiate with God? What allows him this right? Why does God listen to him? I see two things in this conversation on the side of Abraham that allows God to listen. Number one, I see this humble heart of Abraham. Abraham asks out of this humble heart, he starts the conversation, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? A few verses later, he says, I'm dust. I'm like the ground. I'm nothing. Abraham humbles himself before God. He knows he's being bold. He knows he's being brave to ask this. But his request comes in humility. He realizes who he is even before he speaks. He states his request in ways like this. I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak yet, but this once. The humility is why he is able to come before God to talk to God about his decision, to make a request before God that kind of on our end sounds like a negotiation. Humility is so important in life, but especially in our relationship with God. James 4 says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, If my people, which are called by my name, what's the first thing? Shall humble 
themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Micah 6 verse 8 says, He that showed the old man what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. I think there's a lesson for us when we pray. When we're asking God for something to do, or that he should do something, it should come with a heart of humility. We need to understand who God is, how great he is, that he is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing. He has been forever and will be forever. And we are sinful, weak, and need his help every hour of every day. Abraham here knows his past failures. He knows how merciful and gracious God has been to him in making that promise to him of being a great nation with many descendants. So he comes with a humble heart. And this is one of the reasons I believe God listens to him and has this conversation. The second thing, the second reason that I believe God listens to Abraham here is Abraham asks something that is after God's heart, after God's will. Look at verse 23, Abraham's request. Are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? Verse 25, it's not after your character. It's not after your manner to slay the righteous with the wicked, that the righteous should be as the wicked. Should not the judge of the earth do right? Abraham asks after the heart of God. He's not asking for himself. He's asking for others. He's pleading for righteous. He's pleading for the righteous, for those that are following God. And he isn't asking anything grand for them that they should be rich or that God should bless them in any great way. He's just asking that God would not destroy them with the wicked. This, my friends, is a request after the heart of God. We know God loves his children. He protects his children. He leads and guides us. He sent his son to die for us. We know the Bible says that God is not willing that one sinner should perish, that all should be saved. And he's made everything possible for our salvation, that we can come to him and accept this free gift, that we do not have condemnation for our sins, but we can be forgiven and free and have eternal life. We read stories in the Old Testament about God protecting the Israelites in Egypt. He's sending plagues to the Egyptians, but the Israelites do not go through these plagues. He leads the Israelites through the wilderness. He gives them food to eat, water to drink. He protects them against their enemies. God takes care of his children. He protects the righteous. And here Abram's asking for the protection for the righteous, a request after God's heart, according to God's will. It might be a little like asking God to protect the persecuted church today. Those that are living for him but are in danger because of all the wickedness around them. Paul even asks this in Ephesians 6, 19 and 20, that they would pray for him while he's in prison. We know it's God's will to protect the righteous. And Abram's prayer is after God's will. Here we see Abraham multiple times asking God for his mercy. And that God will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. All the way down to 10 people. Interesting, if we read further in the story, there's not even 10 righteous people in Sodom. And yet God spared those righteous people that were there. I believe that was God's plan all along. God's heart was to save those that believed in him, that trusted in him. Abraham negotiated till 10 people. And God was willing out of this large city of evil sinful people to spare the righteous that were there. Abraham is praying after the will of God. And what does God promise if we pray after his will? 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, This is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Because of this humble prayer, Because Abraham prayed after the will of God, God listened and answered his prayer even past what Abraham asked. My friends, this should be an encouragement for us to humble ourselves, to pray after the will of God, and then to believe that God wants to answer our prayer. You've been listening to the Gospel Message radio program. My name is Wes Hepner. Our time is up. I hope you'll be here next week further in the story of Abraham. I hope you have a blessed week praying 
according to God's will in humility of your heart.